Good day, good day. Well, Ciao. Uh, F2, huh? F2. How about it? The only, the only championship on the planet that could potentially be more chaotic than IndyCar. Maybe Formula E as well. That gets a bit ropey sometimes. Check, check. Yeah, it's definitely on. I yeah, good, can good you trust me with no, this I No, I can't trust you. Sorry. Um, did you watch the NEF2? A little bit. Did you enjoy it? A little bit. I thought it was... I thought I've only seen highlights. Quali, mate. Quali. How about it? What do we got? So, yeah, I mean... Uh, Porsche, on. pole, seven tenths. Jesus A Christ. second, I think 1.3 seconds quicker than Doohan, who was pole in 2022. In the Please explain. Virtuosi. Please explain. I have not I have no words, mate. I think you don't have many words for it either. I do have words for it, but I want to hear your opinion. Mate, I don't know. I can't give you an answer. And your camera's gone. One camera's already off. Um... Technical difficulties as standard. But <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Um, yeah. So uh, no, back to this camera has never stayed on for an entire episode. It's got it, it's got the the battery span lifespan <sighs> of super soft tires. I yes. have to say. Well, it's only Box it's only right that up. this camera has the same life as a Pirelli tire. So we've got the alternates and the primary over here. Hopefully, <laughs> even this one is having difficulties. The hard tire should last the entire episode. So yeah, Porsche pole seven tenths, uh, one point something seconds ahead of Doohan and the rest of the field basically. Yeah, um, which it, 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 in one way is fairly well, very impressive, and in another way, bizarre is incredible. Yeah, bizarre, in- incredibly bizarre, bizarre. Um, I okay, look, I I remember I pulled a margin back in twenty twenty, but that was of how much? Four and a half, five tenths. It wasn't that much. Yeah, it was. No, because yeah. I was off P two, and it was close. We were like equal into the last corner. I'm pretty sure. No, I pulled off four and a half tenths in the middle sector. Right, we'll have to fact check this because I don't believe you for a freaking second. I'm um, gonna go and find it for you. But yeah, okay, so so you you do your explanation while I I go and find it. Well, we were in drivers' briefing uh, in at St. Pete, keeping an eye on the F2 quali, and I think everyone was. We were all came keeping from that an eye on the world. it, and I mean, we couldn't help but notice that there was a certain person that was so much faster than everyone else. I just don't know. I I don't I don't know how it works, man. Like. How well, look, okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I know he's good, don't get me wrong. Like, Teo's good, but it's weird. He's very good, but so, so, okay. I don't have a problem with Teo th- there. What I do find really strange is that Jack was all the way down there. Yes, you can get it wrong sometimes. He right? was pole last year. Yeah, uh, I know they have a good car there. I mean, I was there. Yes, he, he it was pole multiple times last year. I think he was P17 at the end of quali, and then, like, as well, um. Who was I expecting to be up there? Jay Han. Yes. Jay Han wasn't wasn't anywhere near the front in quali. He was like one point one seconds off or something. And like, come on, when are you ever one point one seconds off? Like seriously, around Bahrain. And then you see like we had we had a quick look before um, at uh, who was it we were watching? Boshong. Yes. And it was I think even by like Ralph's own admission it's probably a, a scruffy lap like it wasn't super clean was it and i think he was one of the best guys wasn't he he was right up there hang on i'm 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 deep in this yeah deep in thought we're in the middle of a podcast pal yeah i know but i want to get this for you because he's a for me the the surprise of the session i was second in the qualifying mate you ain't even in the top three and look it's three tenths four four tenths actually what the fuck you're fifth mate four 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 sorry you're five and a half tenths off. Yikes. Useless. So, why did I think... Sorry, everyone. Overestimating <laughs> your own ability. <laughs> I was like... I thought I was anyway, look at that eye lot. Almost four tenths ahead of anyone. Well done, Callum. Thanks. Um, I think the surprise of that session was Kushmini for me. Because I think he was like right up there. Maybe P3... He was definitely there. Vashaw was there as well. He was he was P3 in the end, no? Oh, I, I think he was clear. They're all up there, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, fair play. I mean, in the campus as well. Yeah. Boshong was P10, right? Yeah. And then he won the sprint, and then he managed to come through. Kate, do you want to get the results up for us? Actually, I I, 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 I did screenshot it. I oh, was you did? Try, yeah, I tried. Look at you preparing well for this podcast. So, this was the feature race. You've got 
Porsche, Martins, Vashore, Hauger, Vesti, Maini, Iwasa, Leclerc, Stanek, Boschong. Okay. Then Daravala, P11, the one you had your money on when we did this predictions. Well, what do you think about the Premers here? They're... Bim and P12. Bim and I think was 1.1 off. Yeah, well, it, everyone off. was at least nine tenths off, so it doesn't 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 matter whether you're one point one or nine tenths. It's still a lot. It's a huge margin. Fittipaldi, Hadjar, Cordiel, Correa, Duan, Maloney, Crawford. I oh. Ben 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 uh, Ben Benavides, Vides, Nisani, and Clem. Mate, what the fuck, <laughs> dude? Come on, like let's let's get it together. Let's regroup, attack. Yeah, but man, how far was he off? A lot. Like One point eight. Something like that. One point six. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Callum, but he's not one point six off. No, he's I know. Not. I know. I know. But I uh, it's just it's one of those tough love. I love you, mate. But Stanek was P nine. All right. Okay, so let's move on. He was a rookie, let's move though. on from Quali because Quali was uh, it's as equally confusing sitting on this couch as it is driving. Okay. Um hang on. I just just if there's anything extra I'd like to say. So your two mates at high tech didn't have a good one either. No. And then yeah, you got Premers in P five. So Vesti did a good job. Well, yeah, a good job, but still nine tenths off. That's the thing here. That's what we're talking Imagine about. Imagine being happy about being nine tenths off. <laughs> so imagine it's being like you an Indy car. N- no, but imagine imagine being seven tenths off on your P two. You go, yeah, I mean, we're P- your P2, how far was I off? Seven tenths. Well, uh, it was a good day, but, uh, you know, we are missing, uh, I don't know, like one tenth per corner. It's a bit of a problem. They're huh? both French, actually, the top two. French mafia. Bravo, ART. Mega job, to be fair. I mean... Well, you you know what? They have a great qualifying car, so I was interested to see the race, and it followed through on the race as well. Dude, he won by like 19 seconds. Yeah, but you know what I think helps in Bahrain is he got a great start, was clear. There was a safety car on lap one, well, regrouped yeah. the field. Yeah, okay, so yes. maybe that was not the case. Regrouped the field. He went, Boschong followed him on the preferred tyre, and then uh, Porsche boxed very early was to that, go on to the hard. soft hard? Yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. No, anyway. sorry, Bo- uh, Porsche started on the hard. The, he start, From pole, he started on the hard? Yes, yes. That's the first. He boxed me. before Boschong. Yes. Who started on the soft? So he did a longer stint on the soft afterwards to the end. And I know the tire is a bit weird in Bahrain. We know this from Sometimes previous years. It can be, yeah. But he won by 19 seconds. And I, because I'm such a big race fan, I took screenshots of all the, the lap charts, right? Um, amongst many selfies. I, uh, <laughs> Very weird, <laughs> man. Um, so poor Cher on the final stint. Is obviously in clear air. Yes. Uh, let's just say, for argument's sake, he's averaged a 50.2. 150.2 for the majority of the laps. Yeah, fairly well. Okay. We're going to go to uh, Ralph, Jack right? Doohan. Oh, okay, Jeff. Who... Okay, we're going to go between Jack Doohan and Jayhan, who are both... They're both good. They, they are good references for you, I think. That's what you're saying. They're very... Well, I know JN's good on a long run in Bahrain because he's, he's always up there in a long run in Bahrain. He was averaging, let's say, 54s, mid-54s. Oh, man, it drops off at the end. Of yeah, the f- 57 on the last lap. Jack was averaging around 54. Aye, 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 so aye. let's say between three and five seconds per lap off for the, la- for the last seven laps. That's a big drop. That's a wheel spin four fifth gear, mate. How? That's a wheel spin four and fifth gear. Have you gear. ever done fifty fives around Bahrain yes, in an F two car? Yes, remember, I, I, yeah, twenty nineteen was not good. It is like I was wheel spinning four fifth gear. Yeah, yeah, it's horrendous. It sucks. You feel like you're driving a taxi. You want? Yeah, that's a <laughs> box. It's an Uber. It's a Toyota Prius going around the track. But I just don't know how, because at that point in the race, Jahan and Jack are in clear air because they've just dropped back from the field. So it's not like, oh, they're in traffic and they don't have a clear air or the shit. Because they're at g- genuinely that pace. I just don't get that. It just doesn't make any sense. Not if you're clear air, no, and taking it easy. And like I, I was watching this because there were some highlights between Maloney and Enzo, right? And Maloney came from P18 to P3. Very, very good On race. pace. On, On pace. Yes, yes. 
mega, mega. I, I actually screenshot his his laps were mega. But there was a radio communication where he goes, "Is Enzo going to sit there or is he going to start making moves?" Mm. And then immediately afterwards, does him. Yeah. And then Enzo Class. comes on the radio. I loved it. <laughs> Enzo comes on the radio and is like, "Tell tell Zane it's a long race, right?" And this is where the experience side you would expect on Bahrain to come in. Mm. Now, it didn't work because Zane just. Flew by, carried on, said ciao, I love, ciao. I love how Enzo's like, tell Zane it's a long race. <laughs> really, he's just saying, don't pass me. Give me give me more time. Well, yeah, that, but it's a bit of both, isn't it? You know, at the end of the day, yeah, actually, you don't, you don't ever help your teammate in F2, do you, really? No, especially when you're both Red Bull juniors. But uh, Zane... Anyway, like, fair play to Zane. He has a massive pace advantage compared to the people around is him. His so his his pace is pretty comparable. So he starts to drop off at the end, but if you're having to do all those overtakes, yeah. you'd expect that. So his last seven-ish laps, uh, eight-ish laps, probably averaging a low 51, which is slower than... Hang on. But then there's Enzo alongside him. Yeah, yeah but they're, they're going to lap, lap 13 on the softs. That's a good effort. Remember, we, we didn't... Or did we target that? I think it was only Drukovic that made the, the year I did it. I mean, it long, it was like I don't know what what tire they going back in the day. On. I don't know what tire they started on. No, it must have been soft hard. You don't you don't plan to. Well, I think because the soft was stronger for some reason on a long run. There, it's not unusual. Right, it it's not unusual. Did they resurface anywhere in Bahrain? No, mate. It's no? still a cheese still grater. Okay, all right. It is still back. a cheese grater. Um, um, but all right, so Enzo. I'll, I'll to be fair, so he's pretty good on a long run um, in F2. Despite turning in 30 times to eight to turn eight, he's pretty good on a long run. Yeah, but when you, when you get a bit of looseness into there, it's quite tough. Okay. He's averaging 53s. It's just weird. All right. Um, it was, but watching the race, the last couple of laps was just like... Well, because you get some people who've hit a cliff, right? And you get some who are powering through. Obviously, sometimes as a driver, you just don't know what you're going to get. Well, young Clem, uh, he... I don't know what he was doing, what strategy he was on, but he was coming through at a rate of knots. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He got it together. There's nothing better than that feeling when everyone's cruising at 54s, well, not cruising, and you're doing 51s. Well, that, that you know, this was a thing that pissed me off about uh, the way the fastest lap point is built, right? Because in history... If you went prime option in the race mm. and you put those options on with low fuel, you are going to get fastest lap. Yep. But always the safest and the best option if you're starting in the top six is to go option prime. So option is a soft tire and prime is a hard yep. tire. To cover the safety car. But you are never going to get fastest lap compared to someone on the options at the end of the stint uh -huh. or the end of the race. So at Bahrain, it's the same thing. If you, if you box for those options... Those last 10 laps normally, maybe not this weekend because, like you said, the options somehow worked well, you are going to fly by everyone. Mm. It's going to feel like you are in a Formula 1 car and these guys are in F4 cars mm -hmm. and just zigzag. Like that Charles video from the sprint race in 2017, yeah. I mean, he just came through. One of those effects. That is how it feels. It's how it looks. That is hailed as the best race in Formula 2 history. Is it? Yeah, they keep replaying it every year. So yeah, it, but it's because it's Charles. Like, well, I mean, he is a good-looking man, isn't he? No, well, I'm just saying, like, if some guy like uh, Viso Yu fucking did that driving back in the old 2015s, they would What are you trying to say about Viso Yu? Well, he's not Charles Leclerc. He's not as famous as Charles Leclerc, is he? Well, not, not anymore, no. Well, my point is, they probably just replay that because they want to advertise the fact that Charles did that drive in F2. And all the best drivers come from F2, supposedly. So that's probably why they do it. Is that why we're in IndyCar? Must be. Shit. Sure. Uh, but I reckon a, a good, a, a good, um, a good example of what you were trying to explain was you at Monza, in F two. Yeah, but I hit a cliff with four laps to go because I was just pushing like crazy. But yeah, from pit lane last to uh, P four. What's your fault for bloody stalling in a pit stop, pal? No, I'm I'm sorry for the for the hopefully the <laughs> last time. <laughs> Bullshit fucking clutch, number one. And you, I, I've explained this many times to you about my engine with the turbo and yes, the, the yes, wastegate. Yes. Right? And the butterflies. Yes, that yes, it would yes. take years to synchronize at full throttle. Yes. 
and you would just stall if you're at the wrong place in the RPM. Bouncing. Yeah, no, mate, I don't. I'm only taking the piss. No, but, uh, I know. That. I just want to explain this to all the viewers because I've had this haunting me, and I try to explain it sometimes, and it never, never gets listened to. So. You, you basically, with these engines, 2019, I did not have a problem. I did the same thing, right? I arrive in 2020, obviously, different car, you get a different engine. Yeah. I come to the, to, to the starts, to the pit stops, and I would have to sit at full throttle for at least two seconds. Otherwise, if I did a start previous to those two seconds, it would stop. I did not have a chance, right? The Cherus, back in 2019, I could do 0 0.5, go, boom and it would launch. I arrived there, and imagine in your, when you're in a pit stop and you have to sit at full throttle mm. for the whole pit stop yeah, just to I make sure you didn't but stall. But it would have changed every weekend. Like well, it changes every start, but you'd never know what you're going to get. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the thing. It's like a box of chocolates. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, but yeah, anyway. You so were Bahrain, last race of the season. No, it was Sakir, the, the, the oval. Oh, my God. The all-engine power I oval. I felt so sorry for you. Like, well, I was sandwiched between the two Premers. That was the that was the problem. No, we're not talking about the crash anymore. I'm talking about your waft. Yeah, no, no, no. But I was sandwiched between the two Premers in that race, you, right? Okay. And it was not good. Like, I could be DRS open. And I was not catching anyone no, even with DRS. You players. were the only person that I could overtake before the end of the straight. But that first half of the race, I was sandwiched between two premers. And one of them would not get off my ass. So I was pushing like crazy. And of course, the tires are going to go. Of course. Well, right? it's you, isn't it? But I still managed to put enough pressure that his his tires went before mine. <laughs> Anyway, oh, yeah. We've gone so far off topic. So far off topic. But I mean, it's Formula <laughs> 2. It's Bahrain. It's still on topic. Back do you to think, where? Um, do you think... I, I actually wrote down a couple of questions for you because oh, I'm, no. like, I'm very, very organized. Um, my first question, who oh, was your goodness. surprise of the weekend? Who was my surprise of the weekend? Maloney, P18 to P3. I think that was that was clear. But, but this will... Like, those... Fl I'm not going to say it's a fluke because he's good, but that result... Like, that can happen in F2. But it yes, will only but happen it's a, it's once, a surprise. sort of thing. No, he might do it again. He might do it again. No, but that's, that scenario will only happen once per season, where, like, suddenly everything just fucking works, and you've just got pace, and you come through the yes, field. Yes, not hopefully you try and be on, on pace from the beginning. Now, this it is... It was like my first race in, in Red Bull Ring. Like, oh, yeah, when you Our P2. strategy was, like... Mega. Mega. Yeah. But but back to back to the surprise. Now, the surprise for you, because I said he was going to be good, and so this is a big F you... <laughs> Ralph. Yeah. I said he was going to be good. You were like, uh, you know, it's Bahrain. He will only be good on street circuits. Yeah, no. Fair play to him. Well, I'm, mate, he listened to this podcast and he just said, you know what? F you. F that Marcus kid. I'm going to go do this shit. That was, that's a nice surprise to have. Cause oh, and, and, you know, like I said, he did it for Adrian. I want Ralphie to do well this year. He needs he, it. He After last it. season, man, the neck and everything. That That's a shit season yeah. when you have a problem with your neck. How many like seasons that? has he done in F2, though? I don't know. You did a few, so you can't com complain. No, but he arrived way before me. <laughs> Second question. Uh, what do you think Doohan did differently from last year, considering he was on pole in 2022? I mean, I could ask my engineer if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I already asked them. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Didn't get an answer. Oh, I'm not surprised. Um, uh, look, again, I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. Um, you can make a mistake, but I mean, it doesn't look like he made a mistake every lap. I don't think so. No, and you're, he's not that no. slow. I think Jack's an absolute wagon driver. I, I, I mean, it could look they could have they could have just got it wrong, which is, I, I don't think it's possible. But if you look at some of the teams, High Tech weren't strong in qualifying. Virtuosi weren't strong in qualifying. Prema, I mean, relative to Porsche, were not strong in qualifying. No one was strong in qualifying except for ART. Mm. So everyone got it wrong. But to be seven seconds off to the end of the stint in uh, in the race, uh, both MP, which is... Uh, and MP, yeah. MP, who had a great car with Drugovic when I was there. Yeah, yeah. A great car again with Drugovic two years later. What the fuck? I don't know. No, that's, that's, why, I'm, that's why I'm asking you, mate, because I, I just... I don't believe it, like... Because for sure, they're going to rock up to Saudi and Jack's going to be like, bang, straight to the top. You'd hope so. Well, that's what I think. Yeah. It'll be... Unless, unless because you said the option tire is a bit different, right? Unless the option tire has changed. 
compared uh, to the test as well. No, it hasn't. You don't think? I think the only thing that's changed... I think the gearboxes are somehow worse this year. Can't, like slower. No, yeah, seriously. They, I think they've changed something in the gearbox. But the 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 um, actual ratios or the gearbox? No, the... Uh, so, oh, someone was telling me the other day. I need to go and do some investigating yeah. because... Well, it's only been... Something, t- something on the power unit has changed okay and it's worse somehow. bear in mind guys the, well, this is a tuesday so we 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 aren't far off of st pete so i i haven't had time to do my reconnaissance yet i did yeah i know you did but i i was this leads into yesterday. my third question uh do you think that the results this that for that weekend yes. is relevant for the whole season no i mean it, it, i for some of them i really hope not mm. um i think Look, I think Porsche looks really strong, really, really, really strong, and you'd yeah. expect so as well. So that's he's going to be up there for most of the races. And to be fair, he struggled a lot at Saudi though last year. Yeah, but he made that mistake in FP1, F free practice, mm. where he backed it in into like turn ten or thirteen. There's so yeah. many corners on the track. Yeah, that was a know. massive one on FP. That's and then you, shot. you're always going to be on the back foot yeah, from there. Yeah. So I don't blame him for that, but I he just you you know like. Whenever you go into a second season or even a third, the confidence you have mm. that ev- you just know and expect everything to be a certain way, I think you'll be fine. But yeah, doing, I mean, that needs to change and hopefully it will change. MP, yeah, the Premers won't want to be there. Uh, the Carlins the, the won't want to be there. The, I think the Premers are a big surprise. Cause it's like but they have these years sometimes, so I wouldn't be surprised if it continues, but they, they, they always put a good card out. I think it's Saudi... It'll be. It will become a bit more normal because you know what Bahrain's like. You do a lot it's of tests. Very individual track, yeah. Well, you do testing there. Everyone gets to know it, and by the end of the, you know, by the time you get to quali, you are closer to everyone's closer than what they would normally be. Then you get to places like Saudi and Monaco, Albert Park this year. Yes. And it'll be more like okay. Oh, that's gonna be cool. That's gonna be sick. When when is that? Is that the third or four, or is it at the end? No, it's. I think it's. Your Texas weekend, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so it's like three weeks, four weeks away. Yeah, sure. Um, so that's going to be a good one. But I think like the MPs will be better in the next races. Yeah. The Premers will be better in the next races. The Dams will be better because Iwaza yeah, was true. worse than I was expecting. Yeah. Charles was make sorry not Charles. <laughs> Arthur was making <laughs> his own lines at turn ten. He locked off as many times as oh, Lewis Hamilton yeah. in there. I did see those. And he was on, but he was like pushing like he was an f3 to be fair he managed to maximize the time out of that line by the end of it because he was not losing yeah, much time. yeah he didn't it. try and rejoin he's just like nah i'm just gonna kept keep it flat and then he had 11s all the way for like it's almost like he practiced it he sort of knew well, what i mean he did it a few times so he had practice but yeah okay the two dams were better in the future the two premers the two mps i think are we still, right. no, still, still, going, still going. uh i think the aits will take a small step back and then Ralph, I think, will be mega in the street tracks, like I've said already. I'm actually willing to put well, money on that. Yeah, but that that campus, they slowly chip away at it, and it just gets, I would say, better and better and better. Because last year he he had some good performances. Yeah. When he when he was feeling it. Well, he's got confidence. Like he's not afraid to barrel roll in speed. You know. Yeah. Who else? What, Carlin's. Um, I did it. Uh, look, I mean, I know Zane did a great job in the race, but I did expect more from them overall. Mm. Um, who else? You do it? like your Carlin's, don't you? I think they do a good job. I mean, I'm. High techs, what do you reckon? Well, my Hunkos is still pretty much the ex Carlin <laughs> IndyCar team, isn't it? What do you reckon of the high tech lads? Uh, so, Hadjar ended up getting it to seven. Yeah, fair play to him. And then actually, Vashore and Correa sneaking into the top 10. What's your point? Well, it's not a bad result compared to some. I mean, do you see a Prema there? I don't. You don't? Where are they? Rene, where are your drivers? Rene, where are the driver? Are you having a pizza <laughs> or a pasta? Stop at the coffee. Why you laugh? <laughs> you bore right now. Oh, sorry. Uh, mm. I'll retain myself. Mm. Um, Listen, I reckon uh, this, this bloke here, Kushmani, he was the... Uh, for me, he was the surprise of the weekend. He was a surprise. He had good pace, some good moves. Do you know what's funny, though? Every year in F2, there's someone who comes from F3 who you wouldn't expect to just, like, go bang out the gate and do a good job. Yeah. There's always someone. Well, the, the thing is, that weekend, I have to say, was the unexpected. Like, it just didn't... It wasn't what either of us expected. No? 
No. No. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, you guys w- watched us and heard us. That was not what we said. Um, and we were wrong, unfortunately. The great thing about F2 is nothing... You like you never you, know. You can never predict it. Never know. Even when I was racing it, it's like you go into a weekend, you're like, in theory, this is a track for us, and it wouldn't be that way. And then in other times, you'd, you'd rock up and you'd be like, it's not going to be that good this well, weekend. Mate, I, I, and I, it was good. I remember you every time just like speaking to your normally French engineers and you'd be like, they've got it sorted. It is excellent. And then you rock up and it's P13 again. Yeah, sorry. That's an like, unlucky number for you. No, right? that's actually like I got PTSD from that number. <laughs> I don't ever want to hear it again. I even I'm gonna stop looking at Twitter because every time I look at Twitter, people take the piss out of me. Saying, he said we'd left these ones, these twi- trez, twiz, trez, This is just becoming unbearable. Merci beaucoup. Um, is that it? All right. <laughs> Fabulous. Absolutely spiffing. Anything else, Kate? Yeah. Do you have anything to add? Any more questions? Come on, this is the last one. Worst livery on the grid in F2. The blue mirrors. Yeah, the blue mirrors. Uh, I get the idea, blue for F2, red for F3, but it just doesn't go with some cars. Uh, there are some ugly cars on that grid. We're not going to get too too much into it. Well, I, I mean, I respect it and I, I, I don't like it at the same time. Ralph, it's a strange one. You got you some see, dudes. Did you, did you see his sponsor? Yeah, no, that's what I'm talking about. You got some dude on the side of your car. No, but I mean, so if someone's going to pay me that amount of money to put their face on the side of the car, fine. I saw it on Twitter that he his sponsors banned from going to the F1 pit lane or something now. Well, because he's done it twice, I think. Because he was taking photos in the pit lane or something like that. Yeah, he's broke the rules twice. It's funny though. I was starting behind Ralph last year, and I like he's like on the grid in front of me and I can see his sponsor dude like doing handstands on the grid. What? Yeah, in front of his car. Like, I mean, fair play. I was like, that's cool. Dude, he's making the most of it. But yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I just, I mean, if it's money, it's money, you know? Some <laughs> that's such an I lot thing to say. <laughs> if it's money, it's money. <laughs> that's it, it's true. I mean, if, if some dude wants to put their face on the side of the car, fair enough. How much, how much money would I need to pay you for to have my face on the side of your car. Well, you're beautiful. So, oh, James Bond would thanks, say, Callum. Um, uh, I wish I could say the same about you. Oh, dickhead. <laughs> um, but we can discuss it another time if you're really interested. Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe a coffee. Uh, s- seven, seven bucks a day worth of coffee. Seven bucks a day, 365 days a year. That's not too bad. Yeah. That's a bit. I w- I'll speak to Ricardo and see see if I can work something out. So rounding off with seven dollars a coffee because that's how much it costs at least in this country. Dude, for coffee. my coffee budget is more than my rental car budget. When I was in Miami last month, I would have spent like thirty bucks a day on coffee. It's ridiculous. What? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Honestly. Whoa. I mean, you, you must right. be on the toilet all day after that. No, it's just that's ridiculous. Good quality coffee is expensive. Especially in Miami. You may as well just buy your own espresso machine and just carry that round with you. Oh, mate, I'm going to... One day when, when there is enough disposable income, I'm going to gift you a whole coffee setup where you ha- you can uh, grind the espresso stuff. Uh, maybe for your birthday. When's your birthday again? 29 July. Same as Alonzo. Okay. Well, oh, anyway, yeah. you grind up the coffee. You you m- measure it to... I think it's eight no 18 grams of the beans, right? Grind it up. You spray it with a little bit of water. So the man who has Starbucks coffee is telling me how to make my coffee. Uh, any coffee connoisseurs out there know it's 18 grams of the beans, right? I I know this. And then you grind it up. You get this little puck disc thing. You tamp it down. Some of that shit, you know. And then you put it in and you've got to put it to like nine All right, bar, all right. I get it. Fuck. And then down to five at the end. Huh? No, 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 this is the proper make your own one. Anyway, one day you'll gift it and you'll have to make me one and then you can tell all right, me all well, about it and sit, tell me that I'm right as well. That's all good. You can it. buy me a Lama Zocco machine. It's only like seven grand. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for listening. See you next time. That's bloody expensive. Ciao. Goodbye. <laughs>